I always know that. Hey. You got to roll. Here we go. Hey. You ain't gotta make a fuss Ay, When I was down, out of luck, and you stuck Ay, It was us in a rut Woke up, I hit a chick for you Baby, give me love, you know I live for you Girl, you know I live for you Ride die, kill for you Let them talk slick, I'm gonna have to split a wig for you Hey guys, and welcome back to Drop the Mic um, On your way in that door, make sure you hit that like button make sure you subscribe to my channel and please guys remember that everything that i say over here is alleged and it's in my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only okay guys i'm going to go ahead and give you guys a up-to-date account on the meg the stallion and tory lane's trial um shooting trial so uh, basically this is day two and day three i'm gonna go ahead and give you both days in one video so on day two when meg arrived to the courthouse she was um greeted by fans outside that had signs and posters that actually read that we stand with megan so she did have some fans out there but she also had some naysayers um there was one man that yelled meg why you lie on that boy so as she was walking into the courthouse so you know we had that going on on day two okay so um i never was able to give you guys like the opening statements so i kind of want to give you guys the opening statement so it'll give you some context of what actually was going on um on day one of this particular trial okay um it's definitely definitely some good stuff so while i'm pulling that up i'm going to give you a little overview so basically meg the stallion tori lanes her friend kelsey harris and i believe it was a driver um but those though meg and her friend kelsey was at a party at um kylie jenner's house okay you, as we all know who kylie jenner is she's um the baby sister of the kardashian girls okay so um they were at a party a pool party um uh, they started drinking i heard there was a lot of alcohol on board um and meg decided to call tory lanes and invite him to come on over um, so he came over, they, um, were all drinking and partying and having a good time. Um, but basically what ended up happening is Tory Lanez was kind of checking for, um, Kylie a little bit. And I'm going to give my theory on why I think that was, um, I'll just be quick. I'll quickly give you my theory. So basically, I believe the reason why um, he was checking for her was because he had already been there, done that with Meg and her friend. OK, so allegedly um, when uh, her friend Tory Lanez was messing with Kelsey, Meg is the one that. In, well, they actually met all on the same day, but Meg kind of pushed him off on her friend Kelsey. Kelsey was sleeping around with Tori, um, but when Kelsey got COVID-19, Megan apparently was doing a hokey pokey with him behind Kelsey's back, okay? Kelsey didn't know that, but this is going to come out as the night goes on. So I'm going to give you the, you know, the hood wrap up version. So when he comes to this party, they're all drinking, they're partying. He's had both of those women, right? So he's going to go ahead and start. He's looking at Kylie thinking, mm, let me try to get up in her milkshake. And so the theory is from some people, not all people, is that Meg got a little bit like jealous or, or mad or whatever. I don't know if it was mad, but I don't know if she felt disrespected for herself or for her friend. But either way, she was feeling some type of way that he was like trying to talk to this chick right in front of her. So she was ready to go. So apparently they are, um, her and her friend left, but when they were halfway down the street, wherever, I don't know how far they were away. She remembered that she had left her slides, her shoes there. So they turned around to go back to the house. Now, 
there's some theories out there that maybe she just wanted to go back because she was in her feelings she had been drinking a little bit and she knew when she left that Tory Lanez was still trying to get up in Kylie Jenner's uh milkshake or, or her cupcakes okay so she goes back to the party Kelsey sits in the car while she goes in to get her shoes well apparently that's when it popped off she went in there i guess she must have approached tori in some way shape or form i don't know exactly how that happened but somehow they got to communicating and he starts walking out with her but when they're walking out they're actually arguing okay they're beefing they're going back and forth they're exchanging words it was not a nice scene kelsey's still sitting in the car okay so this is where it gets convoluted this is where the story goes um everybody has a different account of what happens like pretty much next because this is where all the drama takes place okay so i'm gonna give you guys the opening statement of the prosecutor and then i'm gonna give you guys the uh, um the opening statement um of the um of the uh what's what uh defense i apologize okay um so you know basically you know we i just want to make a statement that tori is innocent until proven guilty so all of this is just you know um hearsay or what have you okay so here's the prosecutor's opening statement the prosecutor opens with dance bitch that's what the defendant said before firing five shots at Megan Pete. Okay, now Megan Thee Stallion's real name is Megan Pete. Tori and Megan's argument escalated after Megan called Tori's music trash and the prosecutors refute the love triangle story. Okay, the prosecutors alleged after Megan called Tori's music trash, she exited out of the vehicle and Tori exited too. So by this time, guys, they were in the car, right? So just picking up from where I left off, from where I gave you like the kind of hood version, okay? Tori then shouted, dance bitch, and fired five shots, emptying the clip of the gun. Megan was hit in both of her feet. While bleeding, Megan limped for cover as a, at a residence nearby house, okay? Prosecutors say Kelsey followed Megan to help her. At this time, Tori began to walk towards Megan and Kelsey. Kelsey approached Tori to stop him from approaching. When Kelsey approached him, prosecutors say that Tori punched Kelsey and pulled her to the ground by her hair a whole grown man y'all okay prosecutors are alleged are alleging that tory lanes then demanded that both of them get back into the suv megan and kelsey complied with his wishes because at this point i'm thinking that he might be waving a loaded gun now again this is the prosecutor's um take on what happened Okay, so when they get back into the car, Kelsey sent a text to Megan's security guard, Justin Edison, and the text read, help, Tori shot Meg 911. Okay, this is huge, guys. All right, so then the prosecutors introduced evidence that showed Kelsey sent a text to Megan's bodyguard alleging that Tori shot Megan okay five minutes after res after the residents calls 911 reporting that they seen her shots coming from a black SUV when the police pulled pulled over the SUV Tori and Meg was in they were in they were located I'm sorry, wherever they were sitting, they located a warm, in quotations, firearm in a slide lock position, which indicates every bullet in the firearm had been used. So the clip had been emptied, okay? So then prosecutors played an audio of Tory's call from jail to Kelsey, where he was apologizing profusely, okay? 
Then at that point, the prosecutors introduced three key pieces of evidence. One, Tori apologized to Kelsey from jail and blamed his actions that night on being drunk. Two, Tori sent a text apologizing to Meg the Stallion. And three, Tori allegedly apologized to Megan the Stallion's bodyguard, Justin Edison. Okay. So then the prosecutors offered an explanation for why gun residue was on both Tory Lanes and Kelly. Okay. They alleged that Tory Lanes shot the firearm, but Kelsey tested for um, gunshot residue because she was next to Tory when he shot the firearm and he got some of it on her when he actually assaulted her. Okay. So that was the prosecutor's opening statement. I think that that is extremely interesting, guys. Okay, so let's move on to the defense, um, the defense's opening statement, because again, that is extremely important. Um, because they are telling a completely different story, okay? They're basically saying they're blaming everything on um, Kelsey, okay? So they're saying that Kelsey was the one that fired the shot. They're also stating that what ended up happening was something totally different that Meg walked over to the car where Kelsey was sitting and started to fight her. And that is when she ended up getting shot by not Tori, but Kelsey. Okay. So Tori's defense is putting everything on Kelsey. Okay. It is explosive. Um, I don't have that exact transcript right here, but I can tell you that that was day one and day one was, oh my gosh. Okay, I found it. Here's the defense's opening statement. So the defense called out that the prosecutor, called out the prosecutors for skipping and not mentioning that Meg Thee Stallion was in a drunken, jealous tirade. That is what led to Kylie Jenner kicking her out of the party. But I had told you guys that in the beginning, right? Okay, so here is their rebuttal. When Megan got kicked out of Kylie's party, Tori left with her. On the ride home, Tori and Megan started arguing and Kelsey sided with Megan. Tori then exposed Megan had, that she had had an intimate relationship with him behind Kelsey's back to get Kelsey to turn on Megan and it worked. So then Kelsey then told Tori, oh, she always does this. Then she told Tori that Megan had basically slept with her boyfriends before and she had an intimate relationship with the baby behind her back. Also, somebody named Ben Simmons behind Kelsey's back. I think he's a basketball player. And, and that was after Kelsey had begun dating both men that Megan basically you know, she sleeps with her life over the overs. I find this fascinating. This confession is what escalated the argument between Megan and Kelsey. Okay. So now, now this is the defense is, this is what the defense is saying. Okay. Then the defense alleges that Megan demanded that they pull the SUV over. Okay. She hopped out the car, went over to Kelsey's side of the vehicle and began to beat her up. Okay. They actually have a witness named Sean Kelly and he is an owner of a residence where they pulled over at and where it was parked. And he said he witnessed Meg beating um Kelsey up okay so this is crazy all right this is this is what they're saying okay so Meg gets on the stand all right when Meg gets on the stand she's basically saying like look she doesn't want to be there she's not feeling it um you know it <laughs> 
she's just in and she's in she's in a bad place right she doesn't want to be here she even got tearful on the stand okay so i'm going to tell you everything that meg said okay the first thing that they asked her was if she knew tori and what the nature of their relationship was she stated that she knew him briefly and that they had an intimate relationship but it was not exclusive okay then Megan stated that she met how did they want to know how she met Kelsey she said she met Kelsey her freshman year of college and they're really close like best friends all right Megan denies her being jealous of Tori trying to talk to Kylie Jenner as the reason why she wanted to leave she stated that her wig was coming loose and so she felt uncomfortable at the party and guys, I think that can, like, listen, when that wig start lifting up and because um, she said that Corey was playing around, um, Tori was playing around and throwing water. And you know how black women, how we black women are about our hair. Like, you can't get it wet. Like, her glue probably started coming unhinged and it was hot and it was probably, like, humid out there. And that thing probably started lifting up in the front. Yeah, that is not a good look. And it's super embarrassing. So, I can see her wanting to go home because of that so that's extremely plausible for all of you that don't know that okay so she said that's why she was ready to go like she was starting to look weird and she didn't want to be caught out not looking her best okay so no she was not jealous because he was trying to talk to Kylie like she's like dead that all right she stated that she wanted to leave but Tori's driver wouldn't leave without Tori so that's why she asked Tori to come on let's go Again, she's refuting the defense's theory that she was drunk and throwing a jealous fit. Okay. So then Meg stated that Tori started the argument in the car after being upset about leaving. He started the argument by turning to Meg and asking her, why are you snaking your friend like that? Blindsiding her and exposing that they were seeing each other behind Kelsey's back. Guys, can y'all imagine the tension that's in that car right at that moment like that is some real b-a-n stuff to do and y'all know what i mean with b-a-n big ass ninja why would you do that you know that she didn't want her to know but yeah you you was on one because you was being a b so anywho Megan stated that she was like, basically, let me out the car because now you bugging. Now you really starting some mess. But Tori convinced her to get back in the car. However, when they began to drive again, the argument escalated to a point that she wasn't comfortable. So she asked to be let out, out of the car again. So at this point, they're all in their beefing. OK, at the, the friends is going back and forth at it, all of that. Okay. Megan stated when she got out of the car, she looked back and seen Tori with a gun in his hand shooting at her over the car door. She could not tell prosecutors if he was standing on something while shooting or if his feet were even touching the ground while shooting over the SUV door. Okay. Cause we all know he's a midget. So everyone's just trying to figure out how he reached over the top of an SUV to shoot anybody with him being like, like seriously, like he's a little person. He's very small. I, I don't think he's taller than like maybe five foot one, maybe four eleven. I don't even know if I can give him five feet. Like he's a small guy. So, and think about it. Meg is like 5'10", 5'11", female. Like she probably, he probably looks like a little ant next to her. Like, oh my gosh. Anywho, I'm sorry. That was a, that was a mean sidebar. But anyhow, I'm thinking he might've been standing on a running board. They have running boards on SUVs. That's the only thing that would've gave him enough height to kind of like go over the top of the door of the SUV and start shooting, okay? So let me get back to the testimony. All right, so then Megan went ahead and contradicted the prosecutor's story. And that could be a problem, guys, because the prosecutor stated that Kelsey was near Tory when the shooting happened. Meg is now stating that when she looked back, she did not see Kelsey. She only seen Tory shooting at her. OK, so that could be a problem when it comes to, you know, when the jury gets the case and they're trying to convict. They're going to be looking at these kind of like indiscrepancies. OK, so 
Then she also contradicted the prosecutor's story for a second time. By The prosecutor stated that after she got shot, she limped away and Kelsey came to check on her. Megan says when she got shot and limped away that both Tori and Kelsey began to approach her at the same time. So these little timelines, these little intricacies in the story, they're going to make a difference, guys. Okay. So then the prosecutors asked Megan, why did she lie to the police? Because Megan said that she did not feel safe. She felt that if she told them the truth that they might shoot Tori. It was a lot at the time. It was a lot of black men getting shot by police for no reason. So she was afraid. Okay. As a member of the black community, we don't trust or cooperate with the co police. And that was a quotation by Megan. Okay. Because she initially said that she had glass in her foot. She, she never said she got shot. Okay. She had to be co she had to be coerced into telling that truth. Okay. So after that, the court took a recess. All right. You know, and that's kind of how that went. I'm going to tell you guys so far, you know, it's getting, it's just really good. Now here is where it is about to get real in the field when it comes to this dag on court mess. Okay. Let's start off by saying that your girl took the stand today, all right? And that was Kelsey. In September, Kelsey had told the police, she gave them a full statement, right? Basically implementing uh, Tory, okay? A full statement. Today, she recanted it all, y'all. She recanted everything she said the oh, let me start at the beginning okay i'm just gonna start at the beginning she said she did not shoot megan the stallion and um she was not in possession of the gun she said she didn't even witness megan getting shot she did not see megan bleeding she does not know who shot megan or even if megan was shot she does admit to hearing gunshots Okay, but she don't she she playing like she don't know. But back in September, she told them that Tori had shot Megan. And she also told them that she was offered a million dollars to stay quiet. Well, today she is denying all of that. Okay, she is straight up lying. OK, she even says, I am admitting to lying to prosecutors about everything that I told y'all in September. She says she doesn't remember anything from that night. OK, <laughs> nothing. In September, she told them that Tori shot Megan three to five times when we got out the car. He offered Then She also said he offered me a million dollars and favors. She also said that Tori punched her, okay? Now she's saying none of that stuff happened and she doesn't remember. And she's also saying that she lied. Let me tell y'all, this thing is getting crazy, okay? And then when asked straight up, did Tori shoot Megan? She pleaded the Fifth Amendment. Now, mind you guys, she was given immunity okay so there is a whole lot of drama that's going on with this case all right so it pretty much ended with her telling retracting everything that she told prosecutors in september her invoking her fifth amendment right when it came to specific questions about the shooting and now she's going to get back on the stand tomorrow and finish her test her her um testimony you guys this case is getting crazier and crazier by the moment what do you guys think what do you guys think about Kelsey invoking her fifth do you think that she's lying now or she lied then and what do you think about Megan crying on the stand leave your thoughts and comments in the uh, comment section and I will see you guys in the next video What's up with you?